SwiftUI lets us attach custom gestures to any view, then use the values made by those gestures to manipulate our views however we want to. In this project, we're going to attach a drag gesture to our card view, so we can grab a card and pull it to either side. We'll also use the values from those gesture to make a slight rotation and opacity, so cards kind of spin and fade away as they're dragged to one side. It takes surprisingly little code. I think you'll be impressed. First things first, you want to open up card view and add a new property to track how far the user's dragged this particular card. So we'll say at state private var offset is cg size dot zero. No dragging by default. Next, we're going to add three modifiers down below our frame here. Again, the order of modifiers matters. And this is never more important than when you work with rotations and offsets. I said it previously, but if I said to you, um, walk forward 10 paces, then turn right, you'd end up somewhere else than if I had said, turn right, then walk forward 10 paces. Because rotation and uh, offset are really tightly linked. In this case, we want to say a rotation first. Move, uh, rotate first a particular thing and then move based on that. So I'll say we've got a rotation effect here of degrees. Now, how many degrees? I don't want to use the full offset, the full amount they've dragged. If we did that, then dragging, say, 100 points would make you turn 100 degrees. It'd be extreme rotation. We want a small bit of rotation, a little flavor of rotation. So we can say I want the double of our offset dot width divided by five. Give me one fifth of the rotation. So 100 points gets you just 20 degrees rotation. It's a little bit basically. Next, we're going to apply our movement. So the card will slide horizontally based on the drag amount. Again, we're not going to use the full drag offset here because it would be quite tiring and the user have to drag a very long way to make a real difference. So we're going to multiply by five this time. So a small drag will move the card a long way. So they can just swipe where small just is left and right. So we'll say our offset is x offset dot width times five, y zero. So move left and right, but never up and down. While we're here though, I want to attach another modifier to make the card fade out as it's being dragged away. This takes a bit of thinking. I'll write the code first and explain what it's doing. We'll say our opacity is two minus the double the abs of our offset dot width divided by 50, like that. So offset width is how far they've dragged left and right. We don't want the full amount though. So if they drag one point to the, uh, to the right, we don't want to have opacity zero straight away. So we divide that by 50. They've got to drag 50 points to get one opacity difference. But they can drag left and right either way. If they drag positive 50, it'll be, you know, divided by 50 will be up to one. If they drag negative 50, we don't really care that it's negative. We just care they've gone 50 points in one direction. And that's where the abs function comes in. It gets the absolute value of a number, which means effectively make negative numbers positive and leave positive numbers alone. So plus 50 will still be plus 50, plus one still plus one, minus one will become plus one, minus 50, plus 50. So we've gone through here, this part, we'll now have a value one fiftieth of how far they've dragged as a positive number. We then take that away from two. And that's intentional. The two is really, really important because it allows the card to stay opaque when it's being dragged a small way. If you think about it, if they drag 50 points to the right, this whole code here will yield one. So I'll have one after going 50 points to the right. We subtract one from two to make one. So if you go 50 points to the right or to the left, either way, because we're using abs, we'll still have opacity one. But from 51 points up to 100 points, now this will go higher, the 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.9, up to two. And two minus two will be zero. So the first 50 points of distance here, from here to here, fully opaque. From here to here though, become increasingly invisible down to fully invisible at the end. So we've made a property called offset to track how far the card's been dragged. We'll rotate based on that, 
move based on that and make it fade away based on that. But there's still one critically important part left. We've got to actually attach the drag gesture here. And these have a bunch of useful modifiers. We'll be using on changed and on ended here. On changed is called every time they move their finger. On ended when it's called when they lift their finger up. And in this case, we're going to make this thing update our offset as they move around. So we'll say uh, the gesture here, like that, with a drag gesture inside. And when we change that gesture, i.e., when we have just dragged around on changed gesture in, when we've moved our finger on the screen, we'll make our offset equal to gesture.translation. As you can see, is a total movement from the start to the current thing. How far they've moved their finger from when they first put their finger down. There are other things in here. For example, predict the end translation tells you where they think it will end based on the speed of their movement and so forth. We want just translation. So as they move, update our offset with their new finger position. Then on ended, we well, don't care what comes in this time, we'll say if our offset dot width is greater than 100, then we should remove the card. Otherwise, our offset should be zero. They haven't moved very far, they've lifted their finger, snap the card back to its original location again. Now we can't just use offset.width here because remember they can drag to the left or to the right, depending on which, which direction they want to go. And if you think about it, if they drag to the right, offset width will be 10, 20, 50, 100, 101, bang, remove the card. If they drag to the left though, it'll be minus one, minus 50, minus 100, whatever. It'll never be above 100. So again, we want to get the absolute value of that number. Make negative numbers positive. All we care about is have they moved at least 100 points away from their touchdown location? If they have, remove the card. With that in place, go ahead and press Command R and give it a try. So I can get this card here, grab it and put it to the left. You see it's fully opaque left and right here. It's fully opaque. When I go far enough though, it'll start to fade away and then it goes invisible and disappears. Next one, fully opaque, because that's the two minus in action right there. You will see the multipliers happening here, very small movements by mouse, lets the card move very quickly, which is great. Boom, I can work my way down and learn all these great things again, again, again. That's it slamming back to center there. So if we don't go far enough, it goes back to center straight away. Boom. Anyway, um, that works great. That works really nicely so far, but, but, to really finish a step, We've got to replace this remove the card comment so the card actually gets removed when uh, we've moved far enough. Now, what we don't want to do is have card view, try and read its parent view, try and read the cards array and say, hey, remove at index five or whatever. That'd be pretty nasty. That means this child view is trying to manipulate values in its parent view. It's what we call spaghetti code. It's not a good idea. A better idea is to store a closure parameter in our card view we can just call, like, I'm done, remove me, please. And we don't know what that means. It might not even have a value, it could be nil by default, with nothing in there at all. But it means that uh, our, con uh, our content view can say, actually, when you want to remove, tell me, I'll handle the removal correctly with my data. Don't you try and screw around with my stuff. So you want to add another property after the card, not before, it's a struct, it'll have a generate initializer for us. And if we use a, the after the card, we get a trailing closure syntax automatically. So we'll say uh, the removal thing will be a function that takes no parameter, returns void. And make this whole thing actually be optional here, like that. So it might have a value, it might not have a value. We don't really actually care. And it can be just nil by default, just forget about it basically. So we've got this closure here, it takes a function, it takes a function, sorry, it takes no parameters and returns nothing at all. That's fine. Um, it's an optional nil by default. We haven't got to provide it if you don't want to provide it. We, we will, but you don't have to. And then down here in our uh, comment, remove the card, we'll just say removal, question mark, parens. And that question mark here means attempt to call the removal closure if it's set. If it isn't, just silently do nothing at all. With that in place, we can return back to content view and add some code to remove cards. We can just say something like uh, a new method here, func remove cards at index int, 
uh, returns like a tool, sorry, cards.remove at, remove at that index. Finally, we'll just modify the way card view is being made. You can say, here's the card to show, but at a trailing closure, that will be called when the trigger for removal has happened, when they've moved far enough to the left or right. And this has just called remove at some index. But if we wrap that inside a with animation call, then our other cards will move up automatically. So we'll say uh, there's a with animation here, remove card at our index, which comes from this value here in our for each, like that. And then uh, that's it. I'll press command B, give it a try and see how it looks now. Here's my card, I can drag it a little bit, release, a little bit, release, go a long way. See the cards move up, boom, there we go. So they're sliding up and going away again, and again, and again, all thanks to that with animation call. You can swipe through all of them now and to get to the very end, a nice blank screen, you've learned everything.